Hi guys, JB and Minot here. And these are my pickups for October and November of 2017. I hope you all had a happy Halloween and a great Thanksgiving. Here we go. Starting with four PS Vita games. Uh, the PS Vita in the United States is kind of on its last legs, unfortunately. But there are a lot of great games that uh, came out for it. And uh, you can still get a lot of games on limited run games. You go to Amazon.com, which is what I plan to do most of the time from now on. I plan on expanding on my uh, PS Vita collection. I've got over 200 games now. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started. The only reason I bought this game was because I heard on some videos that it was very, very high priced, even though it's kind of, it's a really crappy game from what I understand. But uh, I guess supposedly they got high prices on eBay. I couldn't, I didn't know, I didn't notice any high prices for it. So, but I got it for three dollars at GameStop used. And it's called. It was a launch title, Reality Fighters, and basically it's just a fighting game. Where you put your face, you take a picture of your face and you put it on their body and whatnot. And uh cost me like less than three bucks at the GameStop used. This game is a sequel to a game that came out last year. This is Yoma Wari, Midnight Shadows. And you're basically this little girl. I don't know what her mission is yet because I haven't gotten very far in the game. But uh, it's done in chapters from what I understand. But she carries a flashlight. And she spends the night roaming around trying to avoid monsters, uh, using tricks and hiding places and whatnot. Like I said, I haven't gotten very far in it, because the first chapter of it kind of pissed me off because of the dialogue. Which, the thing with the dialogue is, if you mess up a mission, you have to go back to the beginning of it, which is fine. But they make you sit through the what feels like an hour-long, tooth-pulling dialogue in the meantime. Uh, if I could skip the dialogue, I wouldn't mind doing it over again. But uh, there's that. Um, I don't know how scary it is yet. It's getting really good reviews. So we'll see. This game is kind of a unique game. I thought it was going to be like a RPG or a, uh, a brawler type game. But uh, it's called Tokyo Tattoo Girls. And it's not getting very good reviews so far. Haven't played it very far enough to tell, but uh, I think a lot of these critics are mad because it's not a fighting game or anything like that. The game is reminiscent of those old Romance of the, uh, the Three Kingdoms games, which they're still coming out with once in a while. It's all resource management, and it's all uh, negotiation and whatnot. It's basically kind of, it looks like a big giant board game. You're not moving anywhere on the board. It's, it's basically one giant strategy game. Um... Uh, there's no real animation to speak of. You got the girls being tattooed, uh, but you're basically you're a you're a clan boss, and you're trying to make decisions to take over 23 wards in a city. And you're hiring punks, you're hiring other clansmen from other, uh, you're hiring other women from other clans, hiring other fighters, negotiating truces, etc., etc. And in the meantime, you're picking up money, protection money. And uh, the more money you make, the more protection you'll buy. And the more items you can negotiate with and stuff like that. I like games like this. I like games like Romance of the Three Kingdoms. I suck at them. But I still like them. They're still fun once I get used to them. So I'm giving this one a try. It's not bad so far. These uh, same people who said this game sucks also didn't like uh, the game Trillion. Which I think is made by the same people. I think. But uh, I thought Trillion was an excellent excellent resource management game and a good fighter game as well okay this last one I haven't played it haven't even unsealed it it's called summon night six lost borders I think this game every time they said it was due to come out they push it back and push it back and push it back and push it back and until last month I kind of lost hope for getting this game in the states but it finally arrived and I haven't played it yet because there's so many games that have come out in the past couple of months and it's not going to stop till January and it's crazy crazy time but there's that now for some uh, 3DS games uh, the 3DS is kind of uh, on its last legs too they might not say it but I think they are if you look at the number of games coming up for the 3DS compared to the Switch I think the Switch is going to become the handheld portable of choice and I hope that uh, well we'll get with the that later but anyhow these are 
the three 3DS games that I bought this month and in October. Layton's Mystery Journal. Catriel and the Millionaire's Conspiracy. It's basically a Professor Layton type game. You're, it's a point and click and you run into puzzles and you do a bunch of puzzles. There's a bunch of puzzles, you know, in here. It's kind of slow paced and the puzzles are kind of a uh, hold your hand type puzzles where it's basically you keep guessing until you get them right and there's no real punishment for to keep on guessing. It would be a lot better if the puzzles, if after so many guesses, you didn't get any uh, credits. Because with each puzzle, you get a certain number of credits. And uh, it would be nice, or they call them pickerets. And it would be nice if, if say, you guess too much through a puzzle, you don't get a pickeret. But they don't do that here. It's casually paced. The uh, story's kind of slow. It kind of goes back and forth. And it's not even, Professor Layton's not even in this one. I think he's been kidnapped or he's disappeared. But this is his daughter, Catriel. It's charming. If you like uh, the uh, Professor Layton games, you should like this one. It's by Level 5, who do a lot of excellent stories and excellent, uh, I actually like the stories in these games. Uh, but anyhow, if you're a Professor Layton fan, you can't go wrong with that. Okay, you got Minecraft. The new 3DS collection. Minecraft was simply made for games like, uh, for game systems like the 3DS, where you can use a stylus. And uh, I haven't played it yet, but I'll bet you the stylus helps a lot. Okay, this game, I didn't get much hype, but it's been a pretty good game. I'm not, I'm no good with card games usually, but I like them. Coldcept Revolt. Apparently, Coldcept is a very popular series because this is like the 20th anniversary edition, and you play a guy who's who's lost his memory. And he finds out that he's a, a a scepter, and he's trying to gain his memories back. In the meantime, there's a rebellion going on over an oppressive government. But this series is 20 years old. I think in Japan it started with the Super NES. But I know in the States they got one for PS2 a long time ago. I got the game. I've never played it. But it's a pretty fun game. If you like board games and if you like card games, this is an excellent, excellent, excellent underrated gem. Um, each match takes about 30 to 40 minutes. So it's a pretty long game. But it's still really, really fun. And it's uh, not hard either uh, to understand. Some of these games can be kind of difficult to understand. And they're kind of complex. But this one's just complex enough to be interesting. It's by the same people who did uh, Tokyo Tattoo Girls, by the way. Okay, now we're going to talk about my Switch games. And there are at least seven games out there that I haven't bought yet because I'm not rich. Okay. Uh, I'm actually looking forward to the time where... The, 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 oh, what, the releases slow down a little bit, but as it stands, I got about eight games here, let me see how many I got, one, two, three, four, I got eight games for the Switch, and these are the cheaper ones mostly, I didn't really get full price for most of them, not the $60 price, I can't be doing that every month, getting every single Switch game that's $60, but anyhow, Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to show first the three games that I have not played yet. Poi, Explorer Edition. It's kind of like a Zelda clone. It's for kids. You go around collecting medallions and whatnot. Haven't played it yet. Uh, the graphics are kind of cute. This game is uh, was an online game, but it's from Nicholas. Same people who did Cave Story which is an excellent, excellent game. Tiny Barbarian DX. And uh, it's a platformer, kind of like Ghosts and Goblins, only I don't think it's hard. But he's a, he's a, he's, your avatar is a little, tiny little barbarian. And uh, it's basically a old school type platformer slash hack and slash. And this game is a shooter that apparently is very popular in Japan. It's called Tohu... Kabuto Burst Battle 5, or Kabu 
Tohu Kabuto 5 Burst Battle. It's a shooter. The girls are, they, they shoot uh, whatever they shoot. It's it's basically a bullet hell game and a, kind of a fighter game at the same time. It's not getting good reviews, but you know what? I don't trust a lot of the reviews these days, but uh, it's got cute anime Japanese girls. You know, typical Japanese thing. Okay, now for some games that I did play, or at least I can give a first impression of, and I apologize for any glare from the sun. The first game is going to be Soul Dam. Drop, Connect, and Erase. This is also a port of an online game. It's a mixture between Columns and Luminous. What you have to do is you have to drop these uh, squares, or these dots, arranged in squares, and you twirl them around and what you have to do is you have to connect them to other dots and uh, squares and you gotta make as many of them disappear as possible it's kinda hard to explain without playing it but uh... you have to get like if it's a red dot you have to get one red dot between another red dot so that all the dots in between will disappear that's basically it you can't just you know drop them anywhere and it's a pretty good game pretty good puzzle game. If you like Tetris, you like Luminous, you like uh, all those other games, you can't go wrong with that one. Okay, this one's probably going to be one of the games of the year, besides uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Super Mario Odyssey. This is the only game I paid uh, $60 for this month. And I uh, haven't played much of it yet. I've gotten to the Sandcastle. I think it's the Sandcastle. But I like the uniqueness of the gameplay, how they mix 2D and 3D, and you use the hat to turn into certain monsters or certain characters so that you can do certain things. It's pretty good, but it feels like to me like some of the controls are a little bit uh, sluggish. I don't know what it is. Everybody likes the game. I like it so far, but I'm not in love with it like other people. Okay. Here is a kind of a cutesy, hand animated looking uh, Zelda clone, Legend of Zelda clone, Little Do Two Plus. You're basically this little girl, along with her fox, who are crashed on this this land, and they're trying to get back, and they're trying to find the pieces of raft so that they can get home again. And there's all, and most of the uh, dungeons are very very puzzle driven instead of action driven yes there's action and the action is kind of brutal they are kind of tough enemies and the uh, and the uh, refill rate for your health is kind of uh, how do I put it uh, kind of uh, I forget what the term I'm looking for doggone it I'm in the middle of a video and I can't think of the freaking word I apologize but the chintzy, I guess. Chintzy with the uh, health refills. That's the word I'm looking for. If you like Zelda, and uh, you know, you'll like this game. Like I said, it's, it's very puzzle based. This I bought for, I couldn't find anywhere else but Walmart of all places, called Sign Mora X. It's also a port. Most of these games are ports, uh, except for the Mario Odyssey. But uh, this is basically a shoot 'em up. Only instead of energy, when you get shot, you lose time. You have only so much time to get through each level. And you create more time and more seconds by shooting enemy ships. The more enemy ships you shoot, the more time you have left when it's over. And you only got so much time per level to get through. And you can adjust your ship. You can customize your ship eventually. And it's a pretty cool shooter. It's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful game. But if you like shooters, you can't go wrong with this. I think it's really good. If you like shooters, you'll love Cinemora X. Now, here's a game that I got the collector's edition, but I got it for cheap. They marked it down. I got it for the same price as I would for the regular edition. For some reason, at GameStop, they put it out early or something, and uh, now they had to mark it down. So I got this game. Axiom Verge. I was supposed to only get the $29.99 version, but I got the $39.99 version for $29.99. This is an 
Excellent. 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 Super Metroid clone. It's a fantastic game. Beautiful 16-bit looking graphics. If you like Super, Mo uh, Super Metroid, you got to get this game. And let me show you what else it comes with the collector's edition, since some people are really into that. I'm not really into collector's editions. I like just like the game. But, look, there's an art book full of the beautiful art. There is a soundtrack CD, which I should be playing on the background if I had half a brain, which I might anyway, because I can edit this. I just remembered. There's that. There is a Blu-ray making of documentary, and it's Blu-ray, of all things. I mean, these guys went all out. There is this beautiful... map right here did my camera even capture that I might put that up there see I got my Zelda thing up there this is my Zelda poster up there which you can't see because this thing doesn't have much of a zoom but that's okay there you go and it comes with a map of where you go it's like I said it's a Metroid this guy's stuck in a laboratory he's got to find his way out and he has to go through different areas and some areas are blocked until he finds the special items that he needs to upgrade to go back and get into those areas. It comes with, uh, let's see if there's anything else. Nope, it came in this box. And I apologize for the glare. But, and the box is surrounded by this. Okay, guys. Oh, that sun. Ugh. Uh. Let's see if I can lower this so you can see my face, pretty face for a few minutes here. Nope. I guess I have to get close up. I don't know if you want that or not. Anyhow, I still got, Nintendo, I still got at least seven games at least off the top of my head that I still have to get. And hopefully, I'll be able to afford them next month. If not, you might have to wait till January for some of them. Anyway... I hope to talk to you all again soon. I would like a favor from some of you. Give me some topics to talk about because I like to do a weekly video. But uh, I can't think of what to talk about. I want to talk about reviews maybe, but everybody talks about reviews. I don't know. I, I don't know. Just give me an idea what you think I should do. Anyway, to all my Canadian brothers and sisters and to all my fellow Americans, happy Halloween. Happy Thanksgiving, and everyone else, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and uh, happy Hanukkah, and I hope you all have a great New Year if I don't talk to you before then. In the meantime, that's it. God bless you. Bye-bye. Without a warning, you broke my heart. Taking a baby.